Welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am your man. I am your illustrious host, Bill Kennison, here with my beautiful assistant, my partner, not only on the program, and light, Sherry, and she looks beautiful today. Oh, yeah. Looks beautiful today. And she's so humble about it. That's what I love about it. <laughs> Good morning, Jerry Nicholson. Jerry Nicholson. I want to remember him in prayer. He's, he's, he's been a long recovery. And so I want to remember him and his family, wonderful people. We want to uh, remember them in prayer. Give them a miracle this week. A miracle this week. I feel like giving out miracles today, Sherry. Paulette Cup. Paulette! Well, boy, you pick a hard one, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what was you doing? Wait for me to say that? No. Well, we're believing for Paulette. You popped up. Yep. Yep. I'm and believing that God will give her a miracle. I don't care what the prognosis is. I really don't, because that doesn't mean anything to God. That's just as easy as getting rid of a headache. And, uh, and I love her. She's a sweetheart. And I want all of you to pray for her, Paulette. And Jack Friedman, of course, he's put on here according to Gospel on YouTube page. You know, some people go through their whole life and they never know what God wants them to do. I think Jack has found it. Yes. First Jack and I hit it off, I think probably the first time we met each other, and then we were very, very, very close, and then I did a play, and he did the videography on it. And, uh, but I learned so much about the Jewish faith from uh, Jack, and he says he learned the same thing. I don't know if it's good about the Pentecostal faith, <laughs> but we love Jack. We talked about him last night, how indispensable he is. Gary Witt says good morning. Gary Witt. And John Lutz. Well, wait a minute. Let's go back there. Oh, I have to tell you as they come. because. Oh, okay. Well, Gary Witt, love him, known him for many, many, many years. Sure, we have people that are brand new today. Then we have people that actually knew us and was under our ministry in our youth. Yes. And I ain't talking about one or two. We have quite a few. And so uh, that, I love, I love, I love Gary Witt. I love John Lutz. You know, there's another John Lutz. Oh, is there? Well, this John Lutz is, he lost a good friend yesterday. Uh, well, you're talking about Screaming Sam, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He lost and he lost friend. a good friend? Well, let's, let's keep John and the family of the friend. Uh, good morning, Valerie. And Valerie, Valerie, no, she didn't send it to you. She told you about it. Or did I tell you about it? What? The book. Oh, yeah, I knew about it, but I just hadn't bought it, so. Valerie Post, and what the book we're talking about, I, I really don't remember the name of it. Mr. Rogers, it's, it's, yeah, it's about, The World According to Mr. Yeah, Rogers. Yeah, The World According to Mr. Rogers has some fantastic uh, things that he says in there and, and things that he's heard to other people and just, God bless her. As soon as Sherry gets to, but she's a speed writer. I think she's already done. Good So morning. I'll read it. Sue Irby. Sue Irby. Yes. You know, I was wondering, because I've known her since I was 19 years old, I think. Probably. And I was, all, and I was wondering, who was the oldest, her or I? So I'm not going to say, but she is, she is going to have a birthday coming up, and we love Sue. Sweetheart, I love her. Yes. I love her. Family. The, Kimberly Eisenberg. Kimberly, and um, she had Mike's Mike heavenly birthday, I think, this past week. And her partner, Mark, Mike Boyle, is on here. Mike's, Mike and, and Kimberly. And you know what the funny thing is? I never really was around uh, Mike, and, and I'm talking about her, her husband that, that passed, but, and, and Kimberly, but somehow we got close. Somehow we got close, and he... Uh, uh, he loved my mother. Anyhow, he moved to Hollywood, I think, for because my mother talked to him. Derek Kustra, Tammy Derek? Meyer, Craig Meyer, good morning. All right. Well, Carol, 
Tammy and Meyer and Great. Craig, they've been having fun. They've been up at the Wisconsin State Fair. I think I, that's where... Oh, we're... wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. They've been to the Wisconsin State Fair? I think so. Well, for you folks who don't know what's going on, Sherry and I... That was our honeymoon. When I proposed to her... I told her all the great things that was going to happen to her if she would marry me. Well, we uh, we got married, and you know what we had? Our first our, our honeymoon uh, was <laughs> was at the Wisconsin State Fair in Milwaukee. And I got to tell you something. I got to believe it's a lot better off now than it was 50 years ago. But that was actually where Sherry and I spent our honeymoon. And that just, that was funny. That just came up like that. Yeah. Oh, Milwaukee. And we went back there and had one of the greatest crusades we that we ever had. About, uh, what, seven years, eight years later? We went back to Milwaukee yeah, to the Mecca. Yeah. And we were going to be there. About ten years later because Ginger was just born. She was born while we were there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And, uh. And it was, uh, we went up there to do a big crusade, and we spent all kinds of money for advertising, and we started with, I think, 50 people. I think a Sunday afternoon was our first service, and if I'm not mistaken, Sherry, there was 50 people in the Mecca. Which was big. That seated thousands. And, uh... And, but God started moving. By Friday night, we had a thousand people there. And then we ran uh, several thousand. And we ended up being there 15 months. Now that, to me, that is just... And believe me, the Mecca was not cheap. They even, you know, they charged us to even fly, fly the American flag on the stage. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. All right. And Mike Boyle says, you sly devil, you didn't lie to her, though. <laughs> you're right, Mike. I, I don't know. You know, when you're young, you, you, you don't think things through. No. And I was expecting Sherry, when she got on board, to kind of, you know, stabilize me and stuff. But it went kind of the other way around, I think. Yeah, there's no stabilizing in the Kinnison household. <laughs> Well, that could be. That could be. Anthony Golden, good morning. Anthony Golden and Derek Kustra. And Terry Jones is watching. She said hi from Tulsa. Oh, we're I love Terry. We were Disney. talking about her last night. Yes. We were we were talking about her last night. See, we talk about you folks. Sheriff, well, why are you worried about my guard dog? Well, I figured she was trying to get under Come your here. Feet. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to show you my, my guard dog that we're, we're watching with, uh, I mean, that we're watching for our, our daughter, and it happens to be a chihuahua. And uh, she likes the preacher. Of course, Sherry is not very nice. If she pees in the floor or something, she has to go to jail and all kinds of stuff. It's, 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 I don't even want to tell you about it. <laughs> Anyway, we got we got to get into this. Yes, the Sumters are watching. Yes, Joe yes. and Jackie. They're watching. We we were talking about them. I think we talked about everybody last yes. night. Yes. Well, somebody said who else was there? Just Sherry and I. It was, and it was all good. good no, no, stories. no, good things. We don't know any bad. We things. have stories with everyone. We were talking about Joe. How that he literally saved our theater. They're in Upland, literally. Now I now forever be in debt to him. Jack Friedman, mine is a chihuahua. What? <laughs> <laughs> a chihuahua. What? <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I was going to show you to all the people, but you don't want to. I think they can see her. Yeah. Probably. All right. I want to minister this morning on on a little something, and I'm probably going to get personal about it. Is God's gift to you? God has give you winning power. Now, the reason that I can get up and say these things, Sherry and I have, have lived it. Are you seeing something else there, Sherry? Jerry, Jerry Nicholson, he said, just these first 10 minutes has made his day. Well, don't hang up on me yet. I haven't even given you the message. But we, uh, 
God has always, and Sherry is standing here, Sherry, God has always blessed yes. you and I in our entire life. I can't say that uh, Sherry sings a song, or hey, she hasn't sung it in quite a while, but it was a song written by Andre Crouch, and, uh, and it just hit home with me. And the name of the song was, If Heaven Was, was Never Promised to Me. And it just goes on about, you know, if heaven wasn't promised to me, he'd still, I'd still serve him. And sure, that, that, that's how I felt my whole life just about. That no matter, you know, if God doesn't give me a mansion, if he doesn't give me a, a, a new car, if he doesn't give me all kinds of money, I'm still going to serve him. It's been worth having God in my life. Anyway, and uh, so Sherry and I have always been blessed. We started out, and we grew up in meager means. We didn't, our parents did not have money, even though everybody thinks Sherry and I was born, both of us were born with silver spoons in our mouth. The uh, truth of the matter is they were probably paper, they are probably plastic spoons. <laughs> we were poor. Yeah, we were poor. And, uh, and we were preachers. And Sherry's parents probably was... Uh, more progressive on on preaching prosperity, your dad preaching prosperity more than probably my family was. But we we started we started out that way. I remember we were laughing about getting married. Also, she forgot to tell you, the only furniture that we had uh, was her grandmother's dresser. dresser and chest of drawers. I think wasn't it, Jerry? And we loaded it up, and we had $300, because I spent it all at the fair. And so when we came back to, to Rockford, we had to get to Tulsa to start a revival and actually start a new job, uh, assistant pastor in the church. And God blessed us. God blessed us. That doesn't mean, Sharon, that we didn't sleep in our car sometimes. No, we shared hamburgers. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we kind of lit up whenever we seen white white castles, and we used to call them belly bombers for whatever reason you can imagine. And uh, but God has always, since we've been married, He has always He sent a, He sent a person into uh, Peoria, Illinois, for us to buy that church, which burnt down, by the way. I think this past week. Yeah, it did. Yep, St. Patrick's Catholic Church there in in Peoria, Illinois. They can see it on the internet. I mean, if they care to, it was on Saratoga. Yep. And um, Mike Boyle says he's poor. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you are blessed. Are Mike. you saying ha ha ha, or is he saying ha ha ha? Uh, well, he put the emoji. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? He got rich when he when he found when he found uh, Kimberly. Kimberly. And uh, that doesn't mean that we didn't have, but. I'm going to tell you something. The same people, the same people that that uh, slept in their car, literally, not just once, uh, we're the same people that gave practically a brand new condominium to uh, uh, Dick Green and his family, and you can find him. He's a minister. He's still a minister to this day, and you can find him on Facebook, Dick Green. And, and we gave it to them. We literally gave it to them. You say, why? Because God will give back to us. We started life. Both of us in the projects, and one in Rockford and one in Peoria, Illinois. But I'm going to tell you all something. And I remember uh, Jeff McLaughlin uh, one time sent, sent me a message and said, said, I love the messages, but I want to be blessed. And I totally understand that. You see, God wants you to live prosperous. He wants you to live successful. He wants you to be whatever you want to be. He wants you to do whatever you want to do. He is, he is the one that's in control of everything. And you know what? You don't need this stuff later on. No, I, when I was young, I used to have preachers talk about how it's going to be when we get on that other side. No, I don't need it there. I need blessings here. I need blessings here. Jesus told 500 people 
to go to the upper room and tarry until they were endued with power from on high. Man, I used to get jacked up just saying that. Power on high. Well, you know what? Only 120 had enough confidence in, in what Jesus said to follow his commandment. He told 500. 120 actually did it. 380 of them were satisfied as they were without anything changing. You know what? If you're satisfied with that and you're happy, then I'm happy for you. You never hear another word about that 380. Not another word. You can read the Bible. You can check this historical books. Won't hear another word about those 380, but you hear a lot about the 120 that went up to the upper room and tarried for this new thing. That's what they called it back then. This new thing. And took off the old garment and put on the new thing. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, let me tell you how preachers are. Let me tell you how churches are. They like to blame it. Whatever the, the, you're not getting what you want, they like to blame that on the congregation. They like to blame it on those who come for healing. We say they, they'll say that they don't have enough faith or they'll make some excuse. But my friend, my Bible says, go into the city which is what Jesus told that 120, or the Holy Spirit lit upon each one of them. Then a voice rang out. I'm sorry, I want to get it correct. A voice rang out and said, Go into the city, and whatsoever a house you enter, there heal the sick. He didn't talk about praying for them. He talked about healing for them. And they, went, they left that upper room, 120, left that upper room, all of a sudden they were speaking languages that they did not know. We're not talking about babbling and talking in tongues. They spoke in other languages. People were healed. Peter walked down the street and his shadow would heal people. Listen to this. This is not some fairy tale. This is what can be operating in your life. And his shadow would heal them. Now, I want you to remember something. Promised power, which is all that we've had basically by being around all the doubt and everything else. Promised power is not always possessed power. I'm sure Mike has seen, Mike Boyle has seen in his business He's seen them come and he's seen them go. And, and you say, why? They never had the vision. They did not have the vision that brought power. I don't believe that we will find that through a new denomination. I don't think we're going to find it through a new organization. We don't need a new denomination. Somebody mentioned to me this week, you know, you ought to start a church. We don't need another church. We've got plenty of churches, especially in San Antonio. They've got plenty of big churches. So if somebody wants to go to church, they can go to church. We don't need a new organization. But what we do need is a new move from God. And give us the revelation to it. Let me give you a scripture. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now, the Lord must have gave me this when I was a kid. Because I have grown up and I went through my life and I have refused to be fearful. I refused to let fear into my life. And somebody said, why? Because God has not given me the spirit of fear. Here's what he's given me. He has given me power and of love and of a sound mind. Here is the secret. Here's the secret. Go forth every day with the attitude and feeling of a big time winner. I'm small in stature. When I was a child and I got into high school 
and I wanted to wrestle. And I did. First, nobody expected me to make the team. Second, nobody expected me to be very good. Third, nobody expected me to win the state championship. But you know what? Down inside of me, I wasn't afraid. I'd walk out there and there was the other man ready to, ready to wrestle me. I was ready. I was not afraid. God had put some kind of a winning power inside of me. I'm a, I'm a small fella. Even, even to this day, I'm only five foot five. But you know what? I love playing basketball. And I ended up playing semi-pro basketball until I was 32 years old. Actually, the day Ginger was born was the day that I thought, I don't want to play basketball anymore. I just want to play with that baby. And what I'm, what I'm trying to show you here is, God has given you, Mike, Jerry, Gary, I can go on down the list, John. He has given you the power. Uh, Kimberly, Valerie, Misty, he's given you the power to be a winner in the game of life. A winner. He has given you the ability to be as great as you want to be. Think about that for a moment. That's my secret I'm giving to you. God's gift to you is that ability. That's what you're, you're saying, Lord, I want you to give me this and that. He goes, I've already given you the ability. He has given you the ability to be as great as you want to be. Think about it. I like the way Brother Paul in the Bible said it. What he said in in that, we just read it to you, but in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear. This is a man that spent over a half of his life in prison. The what we call books in the Bible, they're actually letters. Every letter that Paul wrote was written from a prison. But never once did he ever say that he was a prisoner of that town. He is a prisoner of that, of that leader. But he would start out some of his letters with Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Man, I'm excited today. A prisoner of Jesus, not a prisoner of these, these means. You see, this is a very important concept to understand. Once you understand it, once you accept it, once you get the spirit of it, you will be a winner in the game of life. I'd love to just go out to each one of you individually. Derek Kustra, I'd like to tell you individually, God's going to make you the winner in the game of life. Don't wait for somebody else to come and do it. Don't wait for God to come and do it. God is in you. God has given you the ability to be as great as you want to be. I had someone this week, actually, this past week, that came up to me and, uh, and they said, how much do you make? And I go, for what? How much do you make when you speak on Sunday morning? I said, I don't make much. Every once in a while, folks will send me something. But I'm not here for the money. I don't need the money. Somebody said, you got that much money? No. But I have the ability. Oh, I wish you would get I wish you'd get this. That's God's gift to us is the ability. There's an old spiritual that says, I got shoes. You got shoes. All God's children got shoes. To me, the old spiritual meaning is that God has given every one of his children a gift. A gift. And of course, when you understand this spiritually, you'll understand that God has prepared every one of his children to win in the game of life. We have pastored big churches. And then we've had it, I remember in Peoria, that church just burnt down. Big, beautiful, one, probably the most beautiful church I had ever pastored physically. And, you know, when I, when I look back and I think of my father, 
my father told me after hearing me preach the first message I'd ever preached. He said, can I give you some advice? And I said, yeah. He was my hero. I'd listen to anything you'd tell me. And he said, well, first, you don't seem too excited out there. If what you're saying doesn't excite you, it's not going to excite anyone you tell it to. That's the first thing. The other is you seem dismayed with your, with your crowd. How many people were there? Now, this is my first message. And he said, if you can't preach to five, you'll never preach to 5,000. My, 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 my. And that was true. And I took that to heart. Not only did we draw tremendous crowds in our, in a, we, we, you know, before Sam hit, I had, I had preached, and then when he did hit, he actually played venues I had held crusades in. And I can remember we'd walk in and the union guys would be there that remember me from before. And they'd go, how are you doing, Reverend Kennison? And I said, yep, I'm doing good. And so they said, well, so you're back. And I go, well, we got a little different message this time. And I was managing uh, Sam. So I want to, you see, if you understand this spiritually, if you'll get that first, all the rest of this will follow you all the days of your life. A few years ago, this was back in the theater that we owned in Upland, we hired a new secretary. One day I told her to accomplish a particular task. I think I've told you this before. And she said, but that's impossible. So I handed her my dictionary. And, and I said, tell me, look up the word impossible and tell me what it means. So she started looking and looking and looking. And, and then she went out and she looked in, another, in a, uh, the dictionary and came back with a puzzled expression on her face. And I said, what's wrong? She said, someone cut out the word impossible out of the dictionary. And I said, I did it. I cut out the word impossible, so if you work for me, impossible is not in your vocabulary. I want people that know nothing is impossible. Everything is good is possible when you look at the presence and power of God in you, inside of you. Every time that you say, I can't. Every time you think, I can't. Every time you feel, I can't. You are denying the possibilities of God by using the word, I can't. Everything that you want to do, you can do. Disbelieve all the reasons why you can't. Just throw that out the window. Disregard all the good excuses that you've got for why you will fail. Forget about that. This is the trouble with some of you. Your excuses are too good. I remember... Uh, uh, we have to, I found out early, you have to look beyond all the reasons you can't be, you can't do, you can't have, and you will discover you can. You can't, you can't be a wrestler. Yeah, I can. You can't be a professional ball player. Yeah, I can. No one, including my family, ever thought I'd be a preacher. But God... Put the can inside of me. No one, my entire life, no one has, has ever thought I could do it, and I, and I cherish that. Telling me that I can't do something is like, is like saying, sick him to a bulldog. That made Sherry just go like this. <laughs> sure, I love this. I love talking to these. Yeah, now she's went like that. I love talking to these folks. I, I love these people. And they love it too. And we have so many, you know, we're the only ones we recognize are those that leave a message, but we literally have about two or 3,000 other people watching that watch and that get changed. 
And we get uh, we probably get as many uh, after we're out off the air and during the week comments as, as we do on Sunday morning. Wait, what else did he love you too? Okay, well, I appreciate that. And Tammy Meyer says we love you. Valerie and I love Tammy. Also, she said we love you. And go see Valerie and Sound of Music if you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think today is... For those in California, is it today the last day? I don't know. I heard she's fantastic in it. And so I want you to go. I want to finish this up. Uh, Sherry and I were at a restaurant, and they had a saying on, on the wall. And I wrote it down, and I remembered it because I thought it was so good. There is nothing so bad as a good excuse. And the better the excuse, the worse it is. You see, you can be what you want to be. And I say that over and over and over. Folks, I'm telling you, you can be. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what God does. Sam had been in, the, in comedy for seven years. And he kept asking me to manage him. And I kept telling him, Sam, there's nothing there that I can manage. You don't make enough money for me to manage. Now get putting it off. Then one day it was like God put in my heart like he always has. Said it's time for you to do something else. Told Sherry, which I thought we'd have a battle, but she went right along with it. I said, I think we need to do something else. And we were passed to a great church in Rockford, Illinois. And she said, what is that? And I said, uh, I think we're going to go out and manage Sam in California. And all she said was, okay. Six weeks after we went there. Now, he has been for seven years. For five years, he was a doorman, Sherry, at the comedy store. We came out there. And Sherry became his personal assistant, and I became his manager. And I remember that we sat down and for several days and talked about his career, what we want to do, what's your pro what, where do you want to go, what's your priority, how are we going to do it? Sherry, six weeks later, he was playing to, to thousands of people and making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a night. And I want to stress again, not because of me, because something opened up inside of him. He had been so beat down trying to make it that he had to take a break. You see, you know that through God in you, and I kept telling him that, you will, you will experience more success, more prosperity, more money. Well, he did it so well that in his life, every year after that, he made over $6 million. And I'm not all worried about the money. I'm trying to show you. It's there, folks. It's there. It's there for you. You have what it takes because God put it in you. I've got what it takes because God put it in me. Mike, you have what it takes because God put it in you. I can go down the list of all of you that's listening. You have what it takes because God put it inside of you. You have what it takes. Turn around if there's somebody with you to turn around and tell them, I have what it takes because God put it in me. Don't deny this God power inside of you. Don't start talking about what God can't do. He can do anything. His biggest thing is to get you to do something. Don't back away from your responsibility to use this power for your own good. You know, these people walking around and they're suffering for his name's sake and, and uh, they're poor trying to show them how holy he is. No, no, no. They're afraid to say, I want power for my own good. Sherry, God's been good to us. That's how we started this this morning. He's been good to us. Jody, good morning, Jody Woods. Jody Woods, there's another one from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I love her. She sends me songs and messages all during the week. But she knows what I'm talking about. She has seen it work for her. It will work for every one of you. I could stand here and just 
name names. Cedric Thompson and his family used to walk to our church in Peoria, Illinois. He wanted to be a photographer. One day, one day, an old man in a beat, beat up, dirty house said, where are you going? He said, we're walking to church. Because he had given so much of his money, he didn't have a car. And they got to talking, and the man goes, you know what, I got some stuff I want to give you. Took him in and gave him and a photographer's business, his entire cameras. Cedric ended up being the team photo, uh, uh, whatever it is that, that, that takes the team's, for the official photographer for St. Louis Cardinals, Chicago Cubs, Chicago Bears, Bradley Braves. I mean, I, I can go on. Sure, we were talking about a man named Jim Lockmiller last night that walked in. He heard me on the radio there in Tulsa. And he said he's going to come over. He was a deacon in the Assembly of God Church. Changed his life. He was selling one or two cars off the front yard of his house. When God got through him, he was a multimillionaire. Had one of the best motorhome uh, lots, car lots there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes. Folks, it will work. It will work. I can stand here and tell you over and over and over. It will work. Heavenly Father... I thank you for this time you've given us this morning. I ask that we take this, this faith that you have put inside of us and let us stand on the confidence of what you have given us. Those that need a healing, Lord, they don't have to wait any longer. They were made for this moment. Cause their healing to come. Those that need financial blessings, Lord, don't just give them enough to feed them. Lord, give them an abundance that they'll never worry again. I speak it to me, and you have made them for this time. You have made them for this moment to receive it. And I'll give you all the praise. Amen. God love every one of you. Now i got to calm down. Yes. I know it. I'm so charged up. But I love you, and Sharon, I really do. And we appreciate those that, that send us stuff. We, we appreciate that. But you know what? If you don't, I'm still in love with you. I'm still going to love you. Because God has made you for this day. I love you. Sherry loves you. God loves you. And we'll see you next week. God bless America. Thank you, Kimberly. See you all next week.